Hello everyone and welcome to another session with Learn at Northstar. In today's session, we are going to write a SQL query in which we are going to calculate the running total or the cumulative sum based on the data in our table. But before we move any further, we have some good news for you. We are happy to announce that we have partnered with LearnQuest and are now offering official and authorized training from IBM, Google Cloud, and Apple. The descriptions for these courses you can find on our website. If you're interested in any of the other courses which you do not find on our website, then please feel free to contact us because we can arrange that course as well. We are also offering a discount till 15th of November. So if you register to our website, you can, you can get a discount and get a good rate for the training. The advantage with these trainings are that these are official trainings, so you'll be getting official certificates from IBM or Google or Apple. And also IBM trainings and Google trainings and other trainings come with lab access. So if you are having trouble finding the right software to practice your trainings, then you can take advantage of this. The IBM trainings also have a self-paced version, so which are basically at a more affordable rate, but they do come with lab access, so you can take advantage of that as well. You will find all the relevant links in the description below. Now, going back to the original topic of discussion, which is to write a SQL query to enable us to calculate the running totals or cumulative sum. We are going to take the example of the employee table and we are going to run our totals against the salary column. So to get a running total, we just have to make use of a over clause and we have to first select the column on which we want to perform the running total. So salary is the column for us. Then we have to just apply a sum function on it. So sum of salary and then we have to use the clause over. And when you use the over, you have to use at least an order by, order by, and this order by uh, should be ideally be on your ID column, which enables you to identify unique record in your table. But since we do not really have an ID column, we are going to go with the first name column. So first, first name. And let's just execute the query and observe the results. So when you run this query, you will see that another column has been created and you have some values. So you have 9,000 over here, then you have 9,000 plus 4,000, 13,000, it's not 13,000, 1,300,000. 13, and then it has added 300,000 and made it 1,600,000 and so on. Now, if we go further down and we go to these records, 14th and 15th, you'll see in that both of these have the same first name, though they have different last names. But let's see what has happened over here. So we can see that the total till this record 13, which is above these records with the same name, first name, the total is 39,000. And then for this record, it has added the 300,000 and made it into 44,000. But the next time it encountered the same first name, it has not added any salary data to this. So it has retained the same value as the previous record. And then after that, once the name changes, so it's on the distinct record in the first name, it has added the value. So this is one limitation with this function that it does not work well with duplicate data. So it really does not add duplicate values. It treats them as one record. So we have to be very careful when we do an order by, we have to make sure that it is on columns that would identify any unique records in the in the table. So now let's just add last name as well to this. And now let's run our query. So now if we go down to that record of Rene, we can see that now it has added the salary values. Now it has treated them as distinct records. Now there are some genuine duplicates as well. So if you, we go above, we can see that the duplicates on the Kevin Brown column and it has given us the same results as earlier. It has not considered unique values for these duplicate records. So we have to be careful. We have to have some way of identifying the unique records. Otherwise, this is the limitation for this function. Now, another variation of this function can be, for now, we have just performed the total sum on the entire data that we have in this table, but probably you want to group it by something. So now we want to perform a cumulative sum or running total for the salary in each department, within each department. So basically you want to go by the department name. So when you go by the department name, you can use a phrase called partition by. So we just say partition by and department name. All 
right? So partition by department name and order by whatever columns identify a unique record in this table. So now if we run this query, we will see that it has now grouped all the records in the department all together. And it has added the values. We can see that the values have been added till here. But again, as soon as the department changes and it becomes marketing, what we are expecting is that it should not be retaining the values from the previous department. But if you see over here, you will see that it has actually retained the values from the previous department and it has not added the values for those two records. Now, these two are duplicate records, which might be your genuine duplicate records. So it has given some weird results over here. That's why we have to be very careful around these duplicate records. But if we go further down, we'll see that now the marketing total was 17,000. And as soon as the department changed to production, it was reset to 900,000. The total was reset to 900,000, which is the value of the first record in the department production. And then it again starts adding and calculating a running total for this particular department. And if we go down, then again, the department changes to tool design and the value, the cumulative sum is again reset to 800,000 and it calculates it based on this particular department name only. So this is how you can calculate running totals or cumulative sums in SQL. It is very easy. You just need to remember that you need to use this clause and you just need to remember the order by should be on unique identifiers and there should not be any duplicates in your table. So this is a very simple method. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please do not forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and do check out our website for the Learn Quest training that we are offering. Thank you and goodbye.